So there's a disorder that many of our viewers here might suffer from. Here's a test. Take a look at this image. What do you see? Look closely. If you said monkeys, you aren't alone. But how many species of plants did you have to ignore to see them? That's right. This disorder involves not being able to see or notice the plants around you. This inability to see plants is known as plant blindness and can lead to boring walks through the park, lack of concern for the ecosystem that you're living in, and in extreme cases, global ecological collapse. But take heart, plant blindness is curable. In this video, we're going to dig into plant blindness, how you can shake it, and why that might be necessary for our future. Buckle up, it's another episode of Weirder Futures. So I've always been fond of plants and foraging, and when I go on walks with people, I often point out some of the interesting plants along streets or forest trails. It's been funny to see how some people react. How did you see that? It's as if I've made the identified plant come into existence out of nowhere. My friends will say something like, I can only see a wall of green until you pointed that out. If you've ever experienced something similar, you're not alone. But plant blindness could go further than just ignoring plants. It can also include not recognizing the importance of plant life to the whole biosphere and to human affairs. A philosophical view of plants as an inferior form of life to animals and or the inability to appreciate the unique features or aesthetics of plants. In American or Western society, we put a premium on animals and humans to the detriment of plants. Even when it comes to mascots, almost all of them are animals, except for the Stanford tree. Look at this goofball. Good God. It'd be better to have no plant mascots at all if this is our only option. Botanists J.H. Wandersee and E.E. E. Schrusler came up with the term for this disorder in their 1999 publication, Preventing Plant Blindness. It seems our culture's lack of appreciation of plants has led to us to physically be unable to notice the plants around us. It's potentially our modern misunderstanding of evolution with plants at the bottom of an imaginary hierarchy and humans at the top of some pinnacle of evolution has convinced many that plants aren't worth paying attention to. Plants are the base of the entire food web. They convert the sun's energy into food for all of Earth. They are the base of biodiversity and key to reversing the biodiversity crisis that we're currently experiencing. Plants are busy sequestering carbon in forests, marshes, and prairies, and they are absolutely necessary to the survival of our species when it comes to mitigating climate change. Plants make up to 57% of the endangered species list, while only 3.86% of funding for endangered species is allotted to them. And we're seeing a huge drop in the number of people actually studying botany in colleges. And this is right now at a moment when we need more people interested in plants than ever before. Plants come in all kinds of varieties and lead unique and interesting lives. If we don't know them, how are we supposed to care for them? How are we supposed to make educated decisions about what gets planted when and where and what gets removed? We found that learning the plants around us can be really grounding and help you feel like you really belong to a place. For many of us that move around for work or whatever reason, we can feel rootless and the uniformity of American cities doesn't help. Getting to know your local plants can help you really get to know the place you're living in. Maybe you've thought that people must be born with some kind of special eye for plant spotting. It's not so. Let me say that Chelsea had a bad case of plant blindness before we started dating and now she can point out more wildflowers than me. I really only started learning the plants in my region earnestly in my early 20s. Even as a teenager in the Boy Scouts, I learned maybe five plants that I could still remember. I think that's mostly because few people in American society know plants well, so the adults teaching us in Boy Scouts didn't exactly know the plants very well themselves. And this may sound crazy, but now when I walk through the forest, I feel like I'm surrounded by friends everywhere. There's my buddy the Yopon, there's an oak, and look, coral honeysuckles decided to reappear after the winter. So what can you do? Step one to cure yourself of plant blindness is to start spending more time in nature. Take time to look at individual trees, vines, and bushes. Look at the little stuff growing in the cracks. Look at the ornamental plants people are proudly showing off in their yards. If you have children, get them outside as much as possible. Anecdotally, it seems that people with a love of plants had memorable experiences in nature in their youth. Now that you've got some exposure, it's time to identify. Download the iNaturalist app. There are plenty of plant identification apps out there, but this one is our favorite. Get several good pictures of the various parts of the plant you're identifying, taking care not to harm the plant. The app will give you multiple suggestions. I've noticed a lot of newcomers will select the first option offered and they just call it a day. If you have the time, it's good to double check the plants they suggest on Google Images or Wikipedia to see if your plant in the wild really matches the selection from iNaturalist. 
Okay, now congratulations, you've identified your first plant. Now you know the name of that specific little planty, but also its cousins and grandparents and ants all around. Say hi, and move on to the next one. It can be overwhelming at first because you'll start to notice more and more plants that you can't name. Don't worry, you don't have to learn them all in one year. They'll all be back next year. My suggestion is to start big. Learn the trees in your neighborhood. Then learn the bushes, woody plants, flowers, grasses, down to the little weedy guys. For those that don't already know, a weed is just a plant that isn't where it belongs. No species is a weed. But I do personally consider invasive introduced species as weeds that should be destroyed. As you start to see more and more plants, it's a good idea to get an identification book from the library. Search things like trees of your state, wildflowers of your state. Gr grasses are really, really hard to identify, but if you're up for the challenge, give them a shot. I'd recommend looking up local conservation organizations that are doing work to preserve and restore local ecosystems. They often have days where you can go and plant as a volunteer trees, marsh grass, or prairie grass, and those are great opportunities to meet rare local species in the flesh, or in the root, or in the leaf, as well as speak with local experts. Spending 15 minutes with someone that knows your ecosystem well can really change your whole perspective permanently. It has for me, for sure. Each year, you'll learn more and more species and you'll start to notice them in more and more places. Hey, look at that sweet gum by the library. Check out those Spanish needles along the highway. We're hopeful about curing plant blindness on a broader scale. The first step in solving a problem is identifying that it exists. And now there are lots of people thinking about the issue and creating content to prevent it. Like these cool posters that are free to download. It was a meme that millennials were obsessed with plants. And while most people love their exotic monsteras and succulents, I believe that those can function as good gateway plants. Conservationist organizations are spreading the word that local native plants are key to the survival of local ecosystems, and more and more people are replacing their lawns with diverse landscapes full of native plants. You can check out our video on lawns in the link. Many people know that native plants are good, they just don't know any native plants yet. In pop culture, there are several content creators making great plant-related content like the Crime Pays But Botany Doesn't YouTube account, the In Defense of Plants podcast, and some people even suggest that the animate plant character Groot in the Marvel franchise is a positive way to get kids interested in plants. On social media, people seem to really, really love plants and post about native plants and rewilding gets lots of love, so maybe we're moving in the right direction. But it's going to take each and every one of us to turn the ship around, and it can start in your backyard or on your city block. I hope this video has allowed you to reconsider your perception of the world around you and encourage you to appreciate the beings that support your very existence. So get out there and get to know the plants growing near you. We depend on them. And if you really want to give back to the plant kingdom, kids today could always use a new plant role model. Got any good ideas? Thanks for watching, y'all.